Tbilisi, Georgia. For weeks, mostly peaceful protests with a side of Molotov cocktails have rocked the capital city. Tens of thousands of people are protesting in the streets of Georgia's capital. Outside Georgia's parliament, non-violent protests attacked by police snatch squads. Police fired water cannon at the crowds as some demonstrators turned violent. All of this over a law that would force non-governmental organizations or NGOs that receive more than 20% of their funding from foreign sources to disclose it. Many Georgians believe that the law would preclude them from joining the European Union, and U.S. officials have threatened as much. To clarify what's at stake, Georgia said last fall it wants to join the EU, and we were very pleased when the EU made the decision to, uh, to declare Georgia a candidate. That took a lot of work by the government. What's at stake, the measures you're asking about, are that that's not going to be possible if the government decides it wants to go off and just start um, implementing Russian-based laws. Meanwhile, Georgia's bloated NGO sphere has been a hotbed of foreign influence peddling. With one NGO for every 150 citizens of Georgia, 90% of the funding for these organizations comes from across Georgia's borders. While there is a large organic element to these protests, at the forefront of the mobilization is an NGO funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, a CIA cutout with a long history of funding unrest in countries that are targeted by Washington. I'm talking about the shame movement, which boasts on their own website that it receives significant funding from the NED. The entire resource page on this website is dedicated to helping protesters deal with law enforcement. Last week, the NED privately published a message to Georgian protesters from Damon Wilson, the CEO and president of the NED. His organization has given nearly $10.5 million to NGOs in Georgia from 2016 to 2020. For a few weeks, we've been in the news quite a bit in Georgia. But you and I know this was never really about Ned. It's about Georgians who love their country, support democracy, and know Georgia is part of Europe. I wanted to reach out directly to say, thank you. We support you. We admire you. Far from strengthening the U.S.-Georgian relationship, the government seems intent on ripping the flesh away from it. So at the same time that the government moves to break the bonds of friendships with its allies, it has displayed a brazen willingness to move against you, its own people. It's also a sad time for all of Georgia's many friends who have invested so much over the years in all of you, in our relationships and in the Georgian people. We have gladly given Georgia our energy and support because of your remarkable determination to forge a democracy in a difficult region to indelibly link your country's destiny with the West, to claim unabashedly and unapologetically your ambition for European Union and NATO membership. There will be consequences for Zina and for those who vote to approve the Russian-style legislation, and for anyone impeding the will of the Georgian people for freedom and democracy. We don't shrink from historic moments. We double down. The point of today's video is to provide some background on the political leaders opposing the law and supporting the unrest. Because on this channel, there's just one Georgian legislator that we stand. She was an American girl. All kidding aside, I want to take the time to look at the makeup of the country's pro-EU political bloc. The foreign influence transparency law is backed by the country's prime minister and his political party, Georgian Dream. The country's president, however, is with the opposition. Very clearly, we see a situation which could easily descend into civil war, and if Western elites have their way, open up another front against Russia. Born in France, Georgian President Salome Zorbishvili studied under the notorious cold warrior Zbigniew Brzezinski. As a French diplomat, Zorbishvili was posted in Chad when France supported a coup by the warlord Idris Deby. At Deby's funeral, French President Emmanuel Macron actually sat next to his son, the current ruler of Chad. Zorbishvili's ability to speak Georgian is actually quite poor. While she was campaigning for president, she once commented that Georgia's beauty allows one to, quote, shove things in anywhere you want. She was, of course, talking about archaeology. In fact, she never even visited Georgia until she was in her mid-30s. As my colleague Kit Clarenberg points out, this is colonial government stuff. Another key figure in the Georgian opposition is parliamentarian Georgi Vashadze, the founder of a think tank called the Innovation and Development Fund, or IDF, no relation. Vashadze has spent his entire career pushing e-governance reforms in Georgia and Ukraine, everything from biometric passports to digital signatures. His think tank even advised the notoriously corrupt president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko. Earlier this month, he issued an ultimatum to the Georgian government, drop the foreign influence transparency law in one hour or face the wrath of protesters. 
Another big name opposition parliamentarian is Alexander Elishashvili, who two years ago enlisted in the Ukrainian International Legion to fight Russia. More recently, he fought a leader of Georgian Dream inside the Georgian Parliament over the transparency law. <laughs> While not in parliament, another key opposition figure is Nika Gavamadia, the founder of a Georgian television station that received significant foreign funding. In November 2023, Gavamadia was awarded the International Press Freedom Award by the Committee to Protect Journalists, a billionaire-backed foundation funded by the likes of George Soros and Piero Midiar. In August 2023, the Ukrainian parliament even awarded Gavamadia a prestigious medal for a service to the Ukrainian people. As the Georgian parliament was practically besieged by protesters, members of its foreign relations committee traveled to Washington to meet with officials from the United States Agency for International Development and the National Endowment for Democracy, a meeting which received zero coverage in English media. The meeting focused on USAID-backed projects in Georgia and, of course, the transparency law. So many Georgians turned out to protest your parliament's consideration of the Russian-inspired foreign agents law. As that was happening, a delegation from Georgia's parliament visited Washington this week. The delegation began our discussion here at NED by noting its intent to put flesh on the bones of the U.S.-Georgia strategic partnership, as they put it. And as we told the delegation this week, we're not going away. We're in it for the long haul, because you are. While many Georgians are against the passage of this law, the backgrounds of key leaders of this color revolution attempt beg a critical question. Are they working for Georgians, or are they working for their so-called international partners? Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.